the new Parkway Theater, where good food, diverse entertainment, and community create a place for everyone. For showtimes and special events, check out www.thenewparkway.com. You are listening to High School Fabula, where sports is the way in, comedy is the pilot, and the sweet Jesus is our chest you please sit back and enjoy the ride. Tell us where we can find you again just one more time. Uh, Kareem.Matthews, all social media platforms, including Pornhub. Yeah, you heard I'm it here first. I'm about to follow you on Facebook because that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> find his own addiction. Uh, <laughs> I'm there too. I'm there too. You are you on Friendster? That's all Pedro <laughs> doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Tied all this new shit, likes, unlikes. Uh, I'm following on Facebook. Actually, I'm on MySpace too. He still got AOL. Like <laughs> For the old school head. That's what's up. All right, brother. Well, hey, man, good luck at your show tonight. Break a leg. What, that's what they supposed to say, right? To comedian, you say that? Still break yeah, a leg? Yeah, yeah. Hey, if everybody come on stage, work. break an arm. Hey, bre- <laughs> hey, bre- hey, bre- hey, break a leg and watch it back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Give us free. That's Pedro asking for freedom. On Mother's Day. Well, uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to the High Score 510 podcast. You can catch us at High Score 510 on the Instagram, the YouTube, and the Twitter. You can also tap in with us on our Patreon page where you can get all of our exclusive content that is too hot for the proper show at patreon.com backslash high score 510. And shout out to G Williams. Who are you? I'm out, Greg. Pleased to meet you. Our latest patron to sign up, uh, one Mr. G. Williams. Shout out sponsorship. And we are here with... Uh, this is AG3, and I'm coming at you faster than Amber Heard trying to fake cry on that stand. What happened to you? He had sex with a white girl, that's what. Oh, was it everything oh, I dreamed it was of? Good. She was had it? pink nipples then. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm bored. Yeah. Coffee match the drink. Excuse me. I'm going to tell you, this, this is the coolest show we had so far, Jared. This is most L.A. people you had. You ain't surrounded me by these Bay Area people. Not making sense. I'm, I'm just trying to hook you up with L.A. people, man. That's all. You keep, your, keep yourself on your toes. And we are here with everybody's favorite trucker and friendly captain, Captain P. Funk, coming at you faster than any Santa Ana winds out there. My Lord, I went through Indio. Jesus, it was number sand. Hey, hey, you're fucking with the wrong sun, nigga, okay? <laughs> and we are here with Baylor the Great. Yeah, I'm the conscience of the nigga who ran up on stage on Dave Chappelle. I was off that day. So I apologize. <laughs> I was at home sleep. Oh, oh, he sleep. Oh, he in the back sleep. If you black a skin and full of sin, come forward. <laughs> cool, cool. And my name is Jared, aka DJ Art with two T's for a double dose of that tank tank. The D is silent. So it's just Jart. Your mother's dick is bigger than yours. Happy Mother's Day, guys. Uh, <laughs> Uh, shout out to all our mothers and all the women that are mothers in our life. Sponsorship. We're recording on a Mother's Day Sunday. You know shout saying? out, shout out to Pedro for uh do you get hey Pedro? I'm sorry, I put your card in the mail late, so you probably won't get it till tomorrow or Tuesday. It was a happy Mother's Day to you for being a cuckoo. <laughs> mm. Jesus Christ. You can see we ain't saved on this show. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody's Mother's Day been? I ain't claiming half my kids, so I ain't celebrating Mother's Day with them either. <laughs> he ain't bought none of his baby mama nothing. Oh, good for that nasty nigga. But tell you what, man, I tried to uh, do some shopping in um, Palm Springs on the way back. Man, I man, I thought I was in uh, one of them Star Wars movies, so much sand blowing across the highway. Come on. <laughs> oh, looking for the sand people. What's and the thing? Jawas, the Jawas, the Jawas. Come, come, come take your parts off. Yeah, your take, take, taking parts off my truck. It was so damn thick. Well, in news this week, in honor of Mother's Day, KFC was offering floor arrangements with chicken tenders in them. <laughs> oh, man. KFC has come up with the ingenious way of offering fried chicken floor arrangements for a limited time. What do you guys think about that? So it doesn't come with watermelon. I don't want it. 
They've been trying to use this cloud. What else did they do? They did some other holiday specials, right? It wasn't a Thanksgiving dinner. It was something else. I think this is pretty crazy. It's a vase with flowers, roses, and embedded in there are chicken tenders on long-ass skewers surrounded by fries, biscuits, <laughs> mac and cheese, and some mashed potatoes and gravy. So uh, I don't why know. Why even put the chicken in the, why put the chicken in the flowers? <laughs> I mean, you already it's, got chicken on the side. Just let it stay on the side. Where he, is the watermelon? <laughs> <laughs> We're here with Kareem Matthews and Baylor the Great. Kareem Matthews, uh, you're a comedian. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, man, I'm a comic from L.A., big sports fan, Dodgers, Rams, Lakers. That's about it, man. Okay. All around good, funny guy, you know what I'm saying? In news this week, in news, Dave Chappelle was accosted at the Hollywood Bowl while filming a stand-up for the Netflix is a Joke series. Is it a series or a movie? That's well, a it's a festival. It's a festival. See, I don't even know what yeah, that is. Yeah. Tell us about the festival, uh, Kareem. You, you seem to know more about it than, than I do. Well, they just having uh, shows all around town for, I think it's about a week and a half. And some of them are being recorded that will be airing on Netflix. And his was one of them. But yeah, no, nah, it's just a big festival they're having in town. As a stand-up comedian, who does live performances post the Will Smith slap and cancel culture and now this, what did it mean to you uh, when you saw what happened? I think right now, comedy is going through like a renaissance. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a comedy boom going on right now for, for good and bad, you know? And I just think this was just kind of part of that whole evolution that we're going through. It, it's a lot of eyes on the comedy world right now. And I think to me, it's good. Like it's, it's no such thing as bad attention. I mean, we gonna have instances like this Dave Chappelle thing or the Will Smith thing, but in general, I think all these eyes being on comedy right now is a positive thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, the shit that happened with Chappelle, like, obviously it's going too far, but how many shows there are a night around the country, this is probably, like, maybe the second or third time we've heard about something like this, you know? So it's not like something like this is happening every night. You so we shouldn't I mean? run for the hills if you're a comedian, you ain't gotta, you ain't gotta carry extra protection these days. I mean, and we ain't gotta mm. change up no rules. Like when Juwan Howard slapped the coach of uh, Wisconsin, they wanted to end the handshake line. You know what I mean? I'm like, we don't, let's, let's pump the brakes. You know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't really gotta change up too much. We do not want this to continue to happen, but it's like, we're plane crashes. However many planes land safely a day, you gonna hear about the one or two that don't make it safely. So I always tell people, though, they rush the stage on me. I'm coming with that mic stand. <laughs> well, well, what about when it happens like it should happen? Like, let's say instead of that guy rushing the stage and tackling Chappelle, let's say he would have did T.I. Like, it wouldn't be a big deal <laughs> because because he just did what everybody else was thinking. Uh, that's they probably they probably would have rushed the guy and beat him down just because he waited too long into his set before tackling him. <laughs> so, like, you talking about like, the Barclays just... Center? He's like, somebody tackled uh, this nigga. Somebody... <laughs> I was actually at the comedy store that night. The night Chappelle got attacked, I was at the comedy store because uh, Netflix is a joke, had something at the comedy store that night, too. They did like a reincarnation of Fat Tuesday, which used to be one of the comedy store's big, you know, black nights. Mm -hmm. Joe Torre used to host. So they had like the reunion of that for the Netflix as a joke festival. And the news broke up there that Chappelle got attacked. And mm -hmm. it was crazy because this it was a bunch of comics up there. They ended up canceling the after party because it was just nobody knew what was coming next. The assailant, Isaiah Lee, tried to tackle him, had a weapon on him, and then caught, you know, some might say a overzealous, over the top beat down. Some Man. people said it was just a righteous beatdown. I'm just trying to figure out where do y'all stand on the outcome after his attempt at tackling Dave Chappelle and how he was stretchered out? Do you think it was over the top or just 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 enough? I'm not over the top. You deserve that. I mean, even if you spent that much money to get up there that close, you deserve that ass working. That's a job right there, first and foremost. It's for entertainment. So uh, if you're paying this amount of money even if you don't like that person, that's still their job. You know what I mean? They're not up there with security or anything like that. They're up there by themselves. And it's jokes. The one thing about entertainment in, in general, if you don't like the entertainment, you don't have to look at it. You don't have to listen to it. You don't have to be near it. 
You know what I mean? So if you don't like the message or if you don't like the joke, you can just tune that out. If anything, if he didn't make it off that stage alive, I'm shrugging. Stop. Leave people alone. Because look, y'all, we looking at it as we, we could laugh about it now because his arm got broken. He got knotted up. And it looked like he fought Tommy Hearn. I get it. But <laughs> if he would have gotten to Dave Chappelle and would have stabbed him, or if that gun wasn't, you know, if that gun was loaded or real and he had, and he took out Chappelle, we having a totally different podcast. Absolutely. So I, take, so I take that seriously. You act stupid, you play stupid, you win stupid prizes. And he got he got him he got his ass whooped. That's what he deserved. Nah, that's exactly how I feel. Cause it's like you can't once you start something, you can't then decide how the repercussions are gonna be. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if you break into my house, you can't tell me how to react to that. Yeah. He crossed the line. So yeah. whatever, whatever they decided to do to him at that point is unfortunate. You know what I mean? And there's already been a like- precedent set for it. There's already a precedent set with the fan man at the Bo Holyfield fight. Oh, that's right. Some of them in where they're not supposed to be, they beat the hell out that dude. <laughs> My mom came and got me to watch that part. She was like, this shit entertaining. They whooped him Bro. with a brick cell phone. The old school. Oh, boy, yeah, yeah. The brick. They was bit, beating the him. The brick. And that phone still worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got to worry about no cracks. Yeah, you, you don't got to hey, send it hey. in for new parts. <laughs> hey, bro, back in high school, bro, we used to go after school sometimes, they used to be on a Friday night. Bro, we used to, uh, but we used to go to the live recordings of the uh, D.L. Hughley show. And if you know, man, he before the show start, he capping on everybody. Oh, yeah, he talked to everybody, everybody in the stands. Everybody, nobody got it out of their seat. You had to take that. Mm-hmm. I think that's why our generation is different now. We had to sit there and take those verbal ass whoopings. It's a different time now, man. This generation is built so much softer than us. You know what I mean? Like some of the stuff that they doing, I'm cool with, you know, like they pushing the mental health, which I think is a good idea, but they just too soft, man. Like, it, you know, you got to toughen up a little bit when it comes to that, at least. They gave him some mental health help, help when he yeah. reached that stage. They gave it to him. Yeah, like this is they this helped your, him out. This is your therapy. <laughs> now, you, now, now, now you're getting the physical help. Exactly. <laughs> he, if he didn't learn from that, then I don't know what, what therapy going to help him. I feel like the charges, they should have made some charges stick to him, too, because Will Smith didn't really get no repercussions. And now this dude, they first had felony charges. Then they dropped them down to misdemeanors. And then I think they dropped all the charges all together. And they probably like, dropped them down to a bicycling ticket. Man, that LADA ain't doing nothing, dude. Right. Until <laughs> until somebody get really punished for it, it's going to still entice people to do it. I mean, I think the ass whipping that dude got, though, that was a good deterrent. That's a step in the right direction as far as deterrence go. Yeah. I do. I just feel, you know, more for the people who, you know, don't have a, a large security crew or a bunch of people willing to step up for them, you know what I'm saying? I do think I do think the rules need to change though, because even though, even though I feel like, yeah, we don't see this often, I still think we're a part of a generation that they feed off of going viral. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Cause it wasn't just old boy running up on Chappelle like that. You had old girl up in Minnesota trying to run up on a, on a court, trying to take themselves to the damn court and Come on, bro. That was getting out of control. Oh, yeah, yeah. She she was ready each game. She, she got tackled up. And, and we already yeah. know about as, as and I hate to say it this way, but it, it is what it is. Weak-minded. For you to be influenced by some of these celebrities, they were just they were just on Kanye head saying, yo, you need to tone it down because we know your fans will try to go out there and literally do something to Pete Davis if they see him in the streets. So all that is in the same boat to me. You know, one thing that I saw, they were like, Dave Show made an offhanded joke afterwards. It's like, I, it must have been a trans man, like, because, you know, there's been a lot of issues with him. Dave said that? Jo- he said that he's like, it was a, I think it might have been a trans man. And people like, as, like, right after it happened, and people are like, that's not a cool joke to make. It's like, bruh, he just got attacked by somebody. Right. Who's been the people that have been on his ass the last year, two years, the most? It's, it's been the, the trans community. And to some degree, rightfully so, you know what I'm saying? If they're saying it's hurtful, then... That's the conversation that needs to be had, right? The open up dialogue, not shutting people down as, you know, so I think what Dave is trying to illuminate on in certain ways. And that's comedy perfection for you yeah. to almost have your, your life potentially taken away and to come back with a joke like that. But the crazy part is that the, the person, number one, isn't trans. So like, obviously like it was a joke. He didn't know who the person was. They said he talked to the person afterwards. He went back and met with them after he got his ass beat before he got stretched away. I don't know what that conversation uh, included, but it also turns out that the dude jumped on stage and went after Chappelle to raise awareness about gentrification. 
is what <laughs> is what I is what I last read. What his grandmother, <laughs> who's in Brooklyn, New York, is being gentrified out of her place she's been living for however long. That was the reason why apparently wow. the brother ran on stage to try to tackle him. It was to oh, bring awareness sense. to gentrification of our black and brown people in urban areas. So let's talk what? about that. So guy. it works. <laughs> oh, yeah. That makes sense. That the makes conversation sense. has definitely not uh, turned to gentrification. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard he had a song. He was, I guess he was like an aspiring rapper, though, they said. And he actually had a song called Dave Chappelle. I knew... The moment it happened, I was like, yo, whoever did this is a clout chaser. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like Chappelle's security or the security of the Hollywood Bowl should not have allowed him to even get that far. It's a no-win situation for Dave. Like, there's no way. Well, actually, the dude didn't even win because he got his ass beat. Mm -hmm. But we didn't even know about him before this. To him, it may be worth it. Like, once that arm heals, you know what I'm saying? He's going to be on Ellen real soon. <laughs> right. <laughs> Exactly. Somebody just had, don't want that story. We just had Kim K on here talking about her problems, and now we're gonna have the dude who who's trying to fight gentrification through attacking Dave Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> Back to that security, though. Like you're right because look, if they get to Chappelle, that's the first question we're gonna ask is, where was security? Yeah. And we, and we just had we just had an LA based rapper killed on stage at his own concert. Oh, that's at the Hollywood right. at the Hollywood Bowl. Too right. Yeah. It was at the sports arena, I thought. Yeah. Where, sports oh, arena. where he was stabbed yeah. at with the sports yeah. arena. Yeah. Oh. Now that yeah. was shady because they wouldn't let him bring none of his entourage, but everybody right. else had their entourage backstage. That's who he got into it with, with yeah. some members of some other dudes' entourage, but he was there solo. Hollywood Bowl, the independent security uh, services, all all those places, you know, face a lawsuit. Dave Chappelle could potentially face a lawsuit based upon the fact that they're going to be like, hey, it was an excessive beatdown and he could face a civil suit based on that is what uh, one article I was reading. This doesn't solve anything because basically you saying if you get beat half to death, you get a payday. But your That's chances true. of winning, though, aren't high. Because like, no, no. I heard that, I think I saw that same article and, and someone was saying, I wouldn't even want to be the lawyer that has to defend him in that case against yeah. Chappelle. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> anybody can sue anybody. Yep. The difference is, are you going to win the case? And I yeah. doubt they're going to give that dude money. They might they'll settle out of court. Out. It's gonna, I don't it'll probably get thrown out. They'll get thrown out. That's they'll give him some money out. to be like, hey, man, here's some money, money for your grandma and a little bit of money to go to some rehab for that arm so you can start, you know what I'm saying, throwing a fastball normal I wouldn't again. give him shit. That motherfucker's <laughs> arm. When they, when they stretch it, I was like, ooh, his arm, his arm ain't lax. It's just stuck. It's backwards. <laughs> I was like, that shit stuck out like that. Yeah, he got chicken winged. That looked very painful. Oh, it yes. did. Very painful. It did. To the point where, to the point where I was like, y'all yeah, need to take that off and put it back on the right way. Yeah, <laughs> like, just de detach it and reattach it when y'all get a chance. Uh, Can y'all put me out? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I need somebody to give me some fentanyl lace lollipops real quick so I can <laughs> Come on. take a nap. <laughs> Like a hey, dirt nap uh, uh, shout out to uh, Ace Vane who put this video out with regards to this situation. I'll play it real quick. I will no longer like to be identified as the assailant in this matter. I would like to be identified as the victim. But you're not the victim. Dave Chappelle is the victim. Bitch, I'm in here on life support. They say I might have to go home on hospice. Bro, you started. But they finished it. Correct. What? Incorrect, bitch. I got my ass beaded it. My forehead about to grow another forehead. And that's your fault, bro. That's you're the fucking attacker. Every entertainer known the man was there beating my ass. Ellen DeGeneres and the baby was hitting me with tight team combos. Fucking Jamie Foxx did a leg drop on the back of my neck. Bro, you jumped on the stage with a red. I got jumped on the stage. I'm the victim. Bro, the footage is everywhere. Footage. What you talk about all the feet that was stomping me in my face? I can't. I don't see more feet than anybody on earth. I thought people had two fucking legs. Motherfuckers was sending was centipedes up there. I, I used to be a sneakerhead. I can't even look at my own feet no more. Look, just be happy you're alive, okay? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's good content, right? Yeah, that's good content. I used to be a sneakerhead. <laughs> I used to be a sneakerhead. <laughs> yeah, I saw a lot of people on on the comment section, you know, having different viewpoints. Some people said ancient African proverb: "Fuck around to find out." That's that's what he did. Some other people were like. Dude, it was it was over the top. They shouldn't have done all that. That he didn't deserve all that. And so it's funny that they say the response was over the top, but we're just gonna disregard what the dude did to gain that response. Like running on stage at the Hollywood Bowl is over the top, yo. Like that's as over the top as it gets. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, my thing is it wasn't like they just ran in the crowd, picked the dude out, and started beating his ass. <laughs> 
yeah. that would have been over the top. And I think that's such a great point, man, is we, we can just have this conversation now it's become the, because the outcome didn't turn out different. But yeah. dude had all the tools to make this a completely different conversation. And then what it has been considered over the top with their response, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but I'm I'm hoping every time that that happens in that situation, that that's the response that's given. You know, I think we could all take a page out of our our dear friend uh, Afro Man's uh, book, and <laughs> anytime somebody pop on stage, do especially if it's a beautiful white woman. <laughs> She took a punch, though. Man, punch. that was... <laughs> How dare he put I'm, hands on that beautiful white woman? I'm with it. <laughs> Don't <laughs> come on ask questions later. <laughs> yeah, that stage ain't for you. Though. I don't know you, if that... You're paid to be on that stage. I don't know if you can call that a call stage, but you can call that... <laughs> <laughs> that was like... Hey, that was that like they, platform at the old that platform. Phone. That was a platform at the coffee house. At... <laughs> that was his performance space. Don't enter a man's performance space. Exactly. You know? Don't enter that's, that's, a, hey, that's, a, that's a horse man alumni. No yeah. security needed. <laughs> no, hey, well, you know what? I'm gonna get a team of Afro Mans as my security team if I ever get famous because I know them. <laughs> <laughs> I get a heavy punch. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get her on my security on team too because she took a punch. <laughs> you know, you put her in front of Afro Man so she could take the first punch. Afro Man could deliver the second. <laughs> she took a punch. She did. She got up like, well, what's next? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it might have turned her on. <laughs> <laughs> The NBA playoffs, what is an observation that you've seen in this playoffs? We'll start with you, uh, Baylor. I'm going to say, uh, before I get to my guy, I'm going to say that between the Boston and Milwaukee, it seems like they figured out how to somewhat contain Giannis one minute, and then the next minute they forget. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, But we already know it's all about the supporting cast. As long as your supporting cast show up, pretty much unstoppable because you know Giannis is one of those players that's going to show up every game but you know when we look at this Phoenix and uh, Dallas matchup I consider Dallas a dark horse because Luka doesn't have a reliable second option next to him now I would say his role players have stepped up definitely in the last couple of games because Luka I think this last game that he just played he only had like 26 which is pretty average for him to be carrying a team like Dallas so if if he can average somewhere around 30 and they could put up that same performance around him, that's going to be an upset. I don't think you're going to have too many bad games out of CP3 like he did today where, <laughs> oh, no. you know, I don't think it would have made a difference if he would have stayed in the game because I think Dallas was just rolling. But we already know going back to Phoenix is going to be, is, is, is going to be an issue for him. I would just say if they can continue to, to, to get more production out of their role player, they need Dan Woody to step up. Finney Smith, he played out of his mind today, and that's what it's going to take to take down uh, a top-seeded team like that. But Luka does no wrong, like because I played against Luka-type bodies before, and it pisses me off that they look like they work at a tire shop, but – they lay up package, <laughs> the way they can get, the way he gets to the rack and the way he can shoot. This is about understanding the assignment. Something that, and I don't want to start with LBJ, but Luca will go to the block on anybody, not just the guards. Mm -hmm. He's put every point guard in, in, on, on the block and he's even post up some power forwards and gotten success. That's understanding is the assignment. When you don't have the fastest, when, you, when you're not that, that fast, your speed is not up to par, hey, you go down to that block, you put that shoulder in, the, in, in a chest, and you go get an and one. That's why I respect this game, because he can play inside out, you know what I mean? And, and he can get to the basket, and he can definitely shoot from Curry land. But he knows, depending on the matchup, he has to adjust his game. The only issue I have is he doesn't really have anybody as of right now that's reliable to back him up. Who do you see as that, that person that can play with him? I can give you a position that I would like to see. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he can get another four up in there. But I honestly couldn't tell you right now, if Brunson can stay on that level, maybe he just need another guard. It, it's, it's all about the what ifs. Like, what if they had like a Clay Thompson over there? That would be ridiculous. You know, he just need that, a CJ, a CJ McCullum over there or something like that. 
then Dallas would be dangerous because I don't see Luca leaving anytime soon. They're gonna yeah. treat Luca like like they're gonna treat Luca like just how they treated Dirk. I have my doubts about Luca and the way he plays. And like for you, what is the thing that is the biggest impediment of Luca going from being a really good player, a great player, to a elite championship level player? I think he's already elite type of player. We don't look at him as the main guy to to carry a team to the championship like like this particular team. I think there's another piece missing. Individually, he's going to be there. As long as he doesn't get injured, he's going mm-hmm. to have in, individual accomplishments. But as mm-hmm. far as team team accomplishments, championships and things like that, the front office got to answer to that because there's only so much that show star player can do. They traded away your boy, the unicorn midseason. I don't know if that was just not a good fit, but, you know, LBJ carried a team with similar mediocre parts, you know, saying didn't have a great. And they probably were worst parts. Mo, worst Mo parts. Williams was probably his best number two at the time. And then a, a, a washed up Zedrunas Elgowski. So for me, like, I'm like, Luca is definitely, he's, he's an elite player stats wise. But is an elite player, as in leading a team. We don't know what could happen with the rest of the series and the rest of his playoffs. But from what I'm seeing, that team is deficient in not only maybe the the supporting cast, but also in the driver of that bus, the leader of that bus, utilizing all the pieces in a way that's going to allow. Now today it looked like they were flowing, they're they're hitting their shots. But um, watching game one, I just saw Luca over dribbling the ball, holding on to the ball trying to do everything himself and then last minute you know if he need if he didn't get what he wanted he's dishing it out to a guy who has to then force up with less than four seconds try and find a shot that's a recipe for disaster they're going to lose if they continue to play that way and if Luca doesn't learn how to play more of in a system and actually they devise a system where it allows all the other players to stay involved and allows Jalen Brunson to work when he needs to work and keep him going they're going to get pieced out pretty pretty easily by by the Suns team I hear you on that, but when you bring up when you bring up LeBron and carrying these teams, he didn't win the champ. He hasn't won a championship out of Anthony Davis. He hasn't won a championship outside of Kyrie Irving. He hasn't won a championship out of Dwayne Wade. Outside so of one of his that, super teams, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, you know? I agree with you. Yeah, I'm sorry for interrupting. Sorry, Baylor. I just want to say this real quick. I'm trying not to go against you because I was wrong last time you was on the show. I want to admit that before you go on about Devin Booker. <laughs> Devin Booker, I was wrong. I've been sitting here, sitting on this one. You were right. I said Chris Paul made Devin Booker this and that. That man, he elevated his game this year. Mad respect for Devin Booker. That was right before the All-Star game. Remember when he was mad he didn't get selected? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I want I, I want, I want, to apologize to you. So that's why I'm sitting back here trying to listen to what you say about Luca Because you, you schooled me on that Devin Booker one. I have been agreeing a lot with Jared before you came on this show. I want to know. Would you rather see a two guard or four? You're saying he just needs another just higher need a, level, like an all star type of player. Exactly. You think, let me ask you. Let me ask you this. You don't think he needs a big man of skill? Mm, I don't think to, so. To, we seen LeBron win with a point guard, with a two guard, and with a four. So mm-hmm. I just think it, it just depends on who they bring in and then the system that they build. Going back to you bringing up LBJ, outside of those great second options, we still haven't seen Braun anchor a team without a great second option. At least we've seen Luka get his team to the playoffs. That is that is more than I've seen Steph Curry do. And Steph Curry, <laughs> without, to the Clay, without Clay and without KD that year, they put a 1-2-2, two, two, and he was a pedestrian. Well, yeah. you would expect Luka's talent as a 6-9 ball handling guard to be no, able we, to we had we had we had Cedric Bozeman as a, as a point guard at UCLA. We know a little bit about Paul <laughs> Bozeman. I, so, no. I know I know I know I know but, but Luka, Bozeman, No no but that's that that's always going to be the thing that that defines like you know what I'm saying just like when you say oh, who would win one on one Steph Curry LeBron James like obviously LeBron James is going to win cuz Steph Curry will never get the ball he's going to get dunked I'll, on every play. I'll, unless but, Steph get the ball first. I know, like, no but 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 size it's winners. Size trumps size is like the trump card like when everything else is equal that size and that athletic ability is which will trump skill. And it's and true. and that's that's yeah. just a fact of the matter. Like we can't be like, nah, man, you know what I'm saying? I could be, I'm the greatest jujitsu black belt ever. It's like until I face somebody who got arms uh eight inches longer than mine and legs 10 inches longer than mine, and I can't literally do things that I want to do around them just because their frame, even though they weigh the same amount as me, allows them to manipulate things that I have no ability to even do. I, I right. Think, I think Luca 
for him to turn the corner, he needs to stop smoking cigarettes and eating pizza. <laughs> he definitely, de- <laughs> yo, he definitely looked like he smoked cigarettes after the game. He, he looked yeah, like he got that Vladdy D vibe. Stop hanging out with them, them black women dirt throw at him. He, Dirk he, leftovers. He definitely uh, does. He definitely does. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just remember, I just remember Kyrie going off for like fifty against Curry. I remember him icing that three pointer against mm-hmm. Curry. You know what I'm saying? And that was the second option. If Luca averages 26 points throughout this series, they'll be better. They don't, they get, no, they get swept. You think they get swept? He How dropped, much did he score today? He How many did he score today? something and yeah. they, they yeah. lost. They got, they got, he, got run out the gym. That's what I'm trying to say. If he just averages 26 and his team doesn't show up, it's yeah. a sweep. Well, we know role players play better at home than on the road. The next game would be the true test. Mm-hmm. If, like you said, Finney Smith could just carry a little bit. Jalen Brunson can stay better than he played in games one and two. When you look at to, at today's game, Brunson and Finney Smith played out of their mind. I seen them doing like this. I saw them doing Draymond like stuff during the game where yeah. they was hustling and, and grabbing rebounds and stuff like that. And then knocking down shots, going to the rack. And you got CP3 that got into foul trouble early. You know, they, I think the Suns' leading scorer at the at the time was Crowder. You know what I'm saying? Between yeah. Crowder and Booker. You know what I mean? So, and you already know, if the Suns get on, it's over. Luka needs to mark Cuban and stop drafting these, these shitty-ass white guys. And I'm not saying white guys are shitty. I'm saying the white guys he keep drafting or these very high yellow that just... Didn't they do a sports segment, real sports on that? Dallas. Yeah, they have a very European. He, 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 he well, he pride no, himself he also, on having a very international team for yeah. years there. So some people say the problem is, is that Mark Cuban drafts a team because of the city, because of who his city and fan base are. But that's untrue because Boston is the whitest town in the world. and They've always had the blackest teams and they will come out. If you win and they will come out. Now, I'm not saying that they should have drafted Luca, but let the white pal go. The white pal should not be starting a center for you. That, that's a sign of a weak team. You got Davis Bartans after he signed that contract in his one free agent year. He went out of his mind since then. He hasn't done much. He's falling on Brunson and Finney Smith to do more because everybody else sucks. I think the adjustments they made, instead of just jacking up threes, you see they put Brunson in that post to uh, counter uh, Chris Paul making all those plays in the, you know, in the passing lane. Put him in the post, took him out of him playing free safety. And that's how he got into foul trouble. So that was adjustment you can see by Jason Kidd using some old school methods. So once, the, once those kids see that, they're like, oh, you're going to put somebody in a post? Gonna put Brunson in a post? You gonna post me? Shit, we ain't <laughs> practiced against this in in forever. They didn't know how to act once he got into foul trouble. Honestly, I think if Luca averages the same way Curry has been averaging like high 20 points, he's not trying to score 35, 40 points a game. If Luca focused on scoring an efficient 25 to 30 points a game, even a little bit less than 25, but around 25 points a game, efficient, then I think. Mavs have a much better chance to win because that means that Curry got more scores around it. those here. I know that I'm not, I'm just saying is that this is part of, and this is the part of evolution that, you know, Luca will hopefully get as his team continues to get better. Or they try and bring in more talent. That's going to work. But the whole point is that Luca can go off on certain games and just let him go off. But if they're going to depend on him to always go off, then that's usually going to mean that he's holding onto the ball. The ball's dying, starting and ending with him. Most, most possessions, um, like in that game one. Luca focused on an efficient 25 point game, 30 point game on average. That means that there's probably something going on to where his other teammates are getting more looks, more opportunities, and hopefully in an ideal situation where they have a little bit of game flow, they have a little bit of confidence that, hey, I have an opportunity to, to pick and choose what I do here instead of being catching and shooting because the shot clock's running out and Luca but- needed to just outlet it to me. I understand both sides. One of my favorite players is Kobe, and we knew that he didn't trust some of his players. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's like sometimes you go in that game with the mindset of, I got to carry these cats. If I don't get off, Mm -hmm. then we lose. Until someone proves and steps up and say, no, 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 bro, I got you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what I got to do too. And then you earn that trust. And he's earning the trust. He's earning a new trust with his teammates in the playoffs. In the regular season, it's like, whatever. Sometimes you're going to get off. Sometimes you're not going to get off. Sometimes Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a night off. But in the playoffs, everybody got to show up. Jalen Brunson has the pedigree. Big time shots. Won at Villanova, undersized squad. He was on that squad that won. Yeah, and he was he a C dog. component to that. And his dad was a baller back in Philly, Rick Brunson. Yeah, he, he can make big shots. That's all, watch. I'm like, he's a dude that's shown at the highest level in college that he can make big shots. He didn't make the winning shot, but he but he basically was the main 
probably the main player, second main player on that. I think he let him score in his last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, he balled when they won um, the national title. Well, the thing is, is that but like everyone talks about who's gonna be the next Jordan or how do you get great like Jordan? Well, great like Jordan means that yeah, game time situations for the win, you're passing to Steve Kerr, John Paxson, guys that within the system, within the roles. Within the flow of the game, that's the right play to make. LeBron tried to make it, but LeBron always had, you know, saying subpar parts or was like being like, you do this one thing, you do this one thing, and everyone just do your one thing, and you might get at the end of the game, and it wasn't as much of a flow. I think Jordan was really good and got great when he was like, all right, Phil Jackson helped him realize, and the other, who was the other the coach that helped? Tex Winner. Try, Tex Winner. They helped him realize, like, this is how you're going to win. KD, this is how you can win. Trying to be Batman and Robin with your with your best friend is not going to win because that's hero ball. It doesn't always always need to be hero and then ball. Brian, but then Brian get criticized for that. No, no, because he, so he was well, no, passing it. No, no, Brian was being criticized, was being overly criticized for him not wanting to always take the last shot. And there was times where LeBron also didn't post up JJ Barea and passed it away. So like, there's a little bit of that too. It's like, bro, picking and choosing when is the right time to take over. I don't think LeBron always had that the best mentality for that. Kobe was like, I'm taking over now. Jordan is like, I'm taking over. Certain players knew when to take over and they're more successful. James Worthy. That's the closest you're going to get to Michael Jordan was Kobe Bryant. There is no other Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. It's never, I don't never see that, especially the way we are built. Nowadays. And, and, and Kobe, Kobe got the ball to Trevor Reason in that corner a couple of times. Kobe got the ball to Metta World Peace. Kobe got the ball to Pau Gasol when he needed to, when he wanted to win the fish. No, D this, fish. let me tell you what Kobe, let me tell you what Kobe did. Yeah, it's more to D Fish. Reason why I worked with Paul Gasol and Andrew Bynum there, because when he was jacking up all them shots and bunny hops and miss, two seven footers in there getting the rebound, putting them right back in. That's where that worked. That was before everything went totally uh, outside in. Yeah. And I think Luca's got to improve his D. Uh, Stephen A. Smith was talking about that too, but you know, we'll see, we'll see. Stephen A. Smith talking about everybody. Stephen A. Smith, hey, you know, one thing I like about the basketball playoffs, I can get hot takes from Stephen A. Smith left and right. <laughs> his very first move as the executive was to sign Lamar Odom, who was on crack. In other news, Antonio Brown came out this week on a couple podcasts. Talking shit about my boy Cap. Cabinet, he's a great guy. I feel like he's still for a great cause, but he don't understand. He's not from Liberty City. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's he, a different mentality. Yeah, he ain't even built like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, dudes like me, they ban you. They don't even give you contracts. They don't even want to deal with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm a really icon right now. You ain't see them writing no books about me. Yeah, no, you're Exactly, right. but you telling me Colin Cabinet, like, yo, what did he do? Where's he at right now? This, do you see him? I'm on the streets outside every day. People seeing me, they get excited. You know what I'm saying? Know why? Because I make them feel good. You know what I'm saying? They could relate. This nigga's boots. They know what's no, I know the real, like they know what's really going on. But mm-hmm. they know I still put on a smile and overcome it. You know what I'm saying? Colin Kaepernick created all commotion and went in the cut in the corner. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the people's face every day. You see what I'm saying? I'm out here like, you know what I'm saying? What is wrong with this fool? I'm playing broadcast perfect again. You an idiot. The skin striking that man. Shit, you know they, what made me mad about this? this Shannon Sharp had a great take about this. You know how when he came out and criticized years ago, like years ago when it was in Pittsburgh, he criticized his last year in Pittsburgh. He criticized some of his actions when he did the video in the locker room and all that. And he criticized them. And then when he kept criticizing and people kept hitting up Shannon Sharp and his DMs talking about you just putting another black man down, things like this. What is this fool doing? He's speaking the truth about Colin Kaepernick not being from Liberty City and being a people's face uh, every day, all day. He put down down actually a black man that's actually doing work. (laughs) Man, he ain't from Liberty City. Man, he ain't no, he he don't even know. I'm wearing my Ace Hardware galoshes and some Aniche shorts. (laughs) In my paradigm jacket. This is a walking fucking oxymoron. Why is he wearing boots like it's a storm outside? (laughs) They're rain boots. He's just a fucking idiot, dude. I do give him credit, though. He is is oiled up. He's lotioned up. He looks like he ain't got no ash on his knees, so I give him credit for that. But yeah, I don't get it either. And on another podcast, he talked about Colin Kaepernick taking the deal from Nike and getting paid. I think I saw the Nike deal. Colin Kaepernick made I don't remember how much he made, but it wasn't like tens of millions of dollars. But then some other people saying he did make tens of millions of dollars. So oh, yeah, it was, it was tens of millions. It was, Tens of millions. It was, it was, like, it was 30, 30 million, I believe. Let's see. Let's see. 
Let me look. It was around thirty million. Twenty-two million dollars. But uh, in another interview, Antonio Brown was seen saying he took the money from Nike, and now he, you know, we ain't seeing him. You don't see him in the streets no more. I and he's saying the same thing. I be in the streets all the time still. I be in the streets making people smile. I be in the streets, you know, making sure people is happy. <laughs> You make Brandon use the N word. That's how I'm saying it. I blame Florida and Fontes Berkeley together. Yeah, and I, I was gonna say Pedro. He already had some issues when he was at Florida. He he went to two colleges. Yeah, and he got a fight with the security guard of the football team at at Central Florida. What is it? South Florida or Florida Atlantic? Here's what Antonio Brown also had to say on another podcast. Hashtag Cigar Talk. Oh, as a compensation. <laughs> he took the deal. You don't feel sorry for you. You took the <laughs> deal. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Oh, cabinet. Man, cabinet. you on fucking Nike, man. Yeah. Fuck out of here. You don't feel, oh, so he good. You think he good? Cause yeah, I was yeah, thinking he like, good. But yeah. you know the nigga want to get back in the nah, league, bro. Nah, he don't want to play, man. He was trash, everything. He was trash? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know what trash. He was all right. Come on, A.B. Man, listen, he man. Was all right, A.B. Kaepernick did all that and took the money and then got the commercials. We don't see Kaepernick outside. Where he at? I ain't never seen him outside. I never seen him outside. All right, so, like, don't even say I see him it. throwing the ball, trying to get back in, though. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, but he already took the money. All oh, that's cap. Like, mm. we ain't respecting that, bro. You took the money, the commercials. Yeah. We don't see you outside. We don't see him in the hood. He don't do nothing. Like, yeah. we cool, but now nah, we ain't even saying Kaepernick. He not even from the hood. He don't even been in the trenches. Yeah. Like we like Kevin Nick and all, but like yeah. we ain't we ain't really on that. So as black people, we need to get that clear. Mm. Cause like when we have moments, ain't nobody giving us no nothing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like yeah. he took the hand out, so he gotta take the man out. And- he took the hand <laughs> out. Got, man, he got man, he got bars. He took the hand out. Gotta take the man route. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, my thing is, why is the nigga wearing snowboarding pants with crocs? He can't match, can he? He got a full outfit, a full paradigm outfit that day. Man, you're in the streets. He's being seen. He's like, I'm in the streets dressing like a like a snow bunny. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he dressing like a snow bunny. <laughs> uh, you hit it right on the nose, Jerry. This he nigga out here, man, bunny. he got with Kanye and started dressing all kinds of erratic. We need to. <laughs> Colin Kaepernick just wearing t shirts and afros uh, or, or daishikis and afros. And this motherfucker out here dressed like. <laughs> like he's under Kanye's ward. Do you guys think that there's something to be said though? Is Colin Kaepernick kind of dissipating in the public eye, or is that no. the man squeezing Kaepernick's voice out? And one of the reasons why he should have held onto his platform. He didn't have a huge voice to begin with. Let's not act like you act. Let's not act like the dude was Martin Luther King. Now um, he was a guy that made a stand and stood for something and made a sacrifice for it. It wasn't like. Colin Kaepernick wasn't someone we were going to, like, oh, man, I got to wait uh, for Kaepernick's speech about hope or anything like that. No, he's a guy who made a stand. He's come out. He makes some statements here and there, talks about things and injustices, and he's still doing the work. I don't think his voice is silent. I think this is, look, once he, he didn't, I mean, his NFL platform, let's face it, it wasn't like he was talking about it that much on game day, especially when he wasn't playing. He's doing, he's doing his work. I see him as doing work, man. I fuck Antonio Brown and everything he got to say. I can't really critique Kaepernick um, or what he's done. Um, what he was standing for is it was the right thing. It's the right thing to stand for. It didn't make change. You know, to each his own. I don't think it really did. It brought attention um, to it, though. Brought attention to it. There's no real change behind him. You see, as the country going backwards, lose mm-hmm. women's rights, and next they're going to go after gay people, be married. <laughs> Yeah, that's what's next. It is. They, it they're is. joking about it, right? <laughs> joking about it. And I was like, hey, watch them in that. Because, you know, white folks need to populate the world. You can't have gay people. You can't have white women controlling their bodies. Mm-hmm. You definitely can't have niggas out here running around being free and shit. <laughs> Give us us free. You need to pull you over make sure you ain't got no paraphernalia. Yeah. But prison's full. I don't know why Antonio Brown. I, I can see Antonio Brown feeling like Why can't arrest that nigga? <laughs> My thing is, Kaepernick is doing something for a cause for that represents your people, represents Fine. people that you identify with. What is the point of you acting like he's not doing that work if you're not doing anything? Like, I'm trying to figure out what the fuck he's doing that's been better. Well, that other than, out other, street, other than shooting the music court. videos with a bunch of little children on the field with him half the time because he don't want to pay nobody to be in his real music video. I'm going to tell you what Antonio Brown doing, making fake vaccination cards. That's what that nigga doing. 
Get out of here with that goofy shit, nigga. Stop cooling. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, you know what? There, there is a new enlightened uh, empowerment movement going on um, amongst certain black men. Kanye, Antonio Brown. Kanye, I feel much more confident in his form of empowerment. Antonio Brown, I feel like it's a little more erratic and a little less uh, rational. That's crazy for for me to be saying with reference to somebody like Kanye. <laughs> like Kanye seemed like Neil Tyson Degrassi next to this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was pretty funny. Hey, speaking of which, did y'all see that bird video? Wasn't that trying to make fun of that though? No, it was. But, but then I'm people saying, got on it. <laughs> and people took that shit serious. Serious. That's what I'm saying. Wow. Is it's me in the world. <laughs> Where we nah. just you know, we're in our we're in our fantasies now. <laughs> we are totally there. Yeah, you could probably make it up that monsters still exist, Pedro. Just like man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think there are monsters out there, but most times they're just a reflection of our own fear or the the dark evil that we can ourselves uh, harness and enact on others. I'm trying to figure out how we balance life, man, between what we learn in religion. And now with, I, I kind of like hope that more people find a balancing with some type of religion because people believe in too much conspiracy. Mm -hmm. it, and we got too many churches out here right now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a hard balance. How do you balance life? I guess we just do the best we can. And Antonio Brown ain't doing it. <laughs> doing the niggerish we can. Yeah, Antonio from Brown the is Not the palace. I, I come from the pit, not the palace. Mm-hmm. Come from the pit, not the palace. Stallets, rallets, beasts, and ballots. <coughs> he took the money route. I got the coupe with no mileage. He took the Nike deal. Got to play the man's wheel. Here we go. Be ready to see the light. I put the prayers ready for you to be back. I'm from the pit, not the palace. I'm kind of stylish. Lifestyle lavish. Jump in the coupe with no mileage. Run it. Style it. I'm from the pit, not the palace. The key shit. Cole, did she apologize for her statement she made about Antonio <laughs> no. Brown? No. <laughs> I'll look that up, but let's see what Shannon Sharp had to say about Antonio Brown's take on our dear brother Kanye, uh, not Kanye, on Kaepernick. This is laughable. I want to know what all those AB supporters are now. Because every time I say something about AB, you say, Shannon Sharp, you're putting another black man down. So what would you call what AB is doing currently? Colin Kaepernick ain't do nothing to Anthony, Antonio Brown. What I speak about is Antonio Brown's behavior and his antics and how he's costing him money, yet you and he blame everybody else. Here it is again. What he wants is what Colin Kaepernick got. Colin Kaepernick got Nike. Colin Kaepernick got a documentary. Colin Kaepernick gets to, you know, people still write favorable articles about him. He's like, well, why, why, why he get that? Mm -hmm. he, can, he cannot understand, Skip. Why don't nobody want me? Do you know what I did? Yes. And I kept telling you, they're going to tolerate you until they can replace you. That's with any situation, any relationship, any job. The moment they find someone that can do as adequate a job as you, you're gone, A.B. Yep. I get where you came from. But what does that got? So because Colin Kaepernick's not from the hood, from the pit. check Colin <laughs> Kaepernick's record, what he's done since he chose this path. We all know about A.B., we all know about. I'm from the pit, not the palace. I'm kind of stylish. Lifestyle lavish. Jump in the coupe with no mileage. Run it. Run it. Style it. This nigga is always filming his his videos near construction sites where there's no, like, <laughs> like yeah, after, gotta take no money. Yeah, construction sites, yeah, parks, no zoning. Uh, empty gas stations. <laughs> There's no zoning. Like closed. I mean, like completely closed down gas station, but they closed for like there's a minute. No, there's no zoning. There's no rights. So if it's closed, you don't you don't have to have permits. Oh, dude, I'm he's sitting, from the pit. I mean, That's where he's from. Uh, right from where they're building that stadium. Or where the, they closed that, that gas station at. That's the pits. Jerry, you don't understand? <laughs> Read the music, man. Read the lines. Read the uh, lines. He's an artist. He's an artist. He, he, and he, he would go platinum. He, would, he should be platinum. <laughs> Keisha Cole told me that. Keisha Cole said he should win a he should get a, a Grammy real real quick. It sits on my chest on my chest on a or a, on the, a little <laughs> oh, tiny tape. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. 
Let's get the Cutty Corner shoutouts. Cutty Corner shoutouts. Cutty Corner shoutouts is the same we end the show on, where everyone gets a chance to rant, complain, or talk shit about something that's pissing you off, or or uh, talk about something positive in the world. Cutty Corner shoutouts. Cutty Corner shoutouts. It's it's it's. AG3, do you have a Cutty Corner shout out? Yep, yep. My Cutty Corner shout out goes out to inflation and anyone that got anything to do with it that's not helping it, that's taking advantage of it, that's fucking me over. Went to the grocery store yesterday, bought less than 10 items, less than 10 items, no meat, 50 bucks. 50 bucks. I might have had exactly 10, 50 bucks. Oh, I'm wrong. Excuse me. I had some prepared fried chicken from Berkeley Bowl, but that was like eight bucks. So let's say we take out 10. So tell me the rest of my lime items cost $40. Dude, we're in the world now where limes are 45 cent a lime. That's ridiculous. Mm. A motherfucker going to, going to work with scurvy because he can't <laughs> afford to get enough vitamin C. Hey, Aaron got scurvy. You heard? He over there just going out. I, man, call in and work. They need to put that on our list of things that we could click on the box where we call in, Jared. Scurvy. I had to get out of there. I faked an attack of scurvy. <laughs> Scurvy works every time because I can't afford a fucking lodge. 45 cent a line. We're talking about not too long ago, seven cent a line, 10 cent a line. Berkeley Bowl, you know, it's a little more expensive. It might be 10 or 12 cent a line to go up to 45. That's that's more of a bigger inflation than gas. And don't even get me started on gas. Prices keep going up every day. They'll lower it on Monday about three cents, and then it'll go up. Then it'll go up fourteen cents on Friday. Don't even get me started on gas. I almost did like Pedro and put some of that cheap ass gas station where they look like they put water in it, just like water and and, and a little bit of the orange Gatorade mixed in together. Exactly. I, mean, I don't know what to do. This world we're living in. Got a brother eating pizza right now. Some pizza that I got left over at the school. Thank you for the parents that brought it. Now that staff appreciation week over, I guess I'm just gonna go hungry this week. Let me take your hoes out, huh? I can't even afford to buy condoms. Pedro, do you have a Cutty Corner shout out? Piggybacking right on Aaron, man. This Look, man, you people, mainly talking about you hedge fund babies, you oil tycoons, you market adjusters, you were some no- Good, low down, try. I wish I had JD Manning on my cutting corner shout out. What's wrong with y'all niggas? What's wrong with you? I wish I had JD Manning. He, he, I need him to lay off the black folks real quick and get to the white folks that don't do nothing. They're out here profiting off of poor white folks. I know you don't like it, but you need to stop shucking and jiving. We got a problem. That's what they're doing. And then the poor white folks buy all the bullshit. There's something wrong with his mind. Yeah, it's Biden's fault. Well, technically it is Biden's fault because he's sitting up there like a big dummy ain't doing nothing. Hey, look, either we go all the way in, do something about Putin, or you go ahead and resign because you ain't doing shit about Putin. All y'all People up there, all the Democrats, the do nothing Democrats that allowed all this stuff with the women, Roe versus Wade, y'all ain't fighting nothing. All y'all keep saying is, man, I'm outraged that they did this. Well, how you gonna blame them when y'all just sat and did nothing? You ain't veto nothing, you ain't did anything, you ain't used none of your power. You just up hey, in Joe. there. What, hey, Joe. what happened? Hey, Joe. You're too right. That's why I told you that Democrats, current day neoliberal Democrats, are the Batman of batman is the democrats of superheroes and the and, and the democrats are the batman of politicians motherfuckers don't use the resource they don't want we ain't gonna kill nobody we ain't trying to kill nobody we we yeah. should put them back in argo asylum give them a slap on the wrist so they can escape the next day <laughs> these motherfuckers don't do shit they just play the game and from the leverage and power that they actually could use and have they don't really use it just like bruce wayne trifling ass he don't really use his real leverage and power to fix gotham city through systemic reasons no he just want to he, he don't want to face that part of his life he do a little bit so he seemed like 
like he woke. That motherfucker ain't really doing nothing to change things. That motherfucker just running out there masquerade, beating up people, poor people, and people with mental illness on a regular basis with military grade encryption and weaponry. Okay? Nah, so you Fuck you didn't movie. see that new Batman man movie because it made me seem like that Bruce Wayne was poor. No, no, I ain't Bruce even done Wayne. watching it, Pedro. I'm at the car scene, but uh, Pedro, I want to talk to you about that man. This new Batman that should have been my cutty corner shout out so far. This is the first Batman to ever feel like might commit suicide. <laughs> like, you don't have to worry about the Joker, he don't have to worry about the Joker. He might, he might jump off a building, he might, he might, he might hold a criminal over the building and bring him back in and just to go himself off. Say, you know, I, 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 I'm not trying to glide. Both of y'all, both of you guys, is so right. I, I never, I was. Gonna argue with y'all, but I can't. <laughs> what Aaron said, I never thought about. I was like, you know what? That's exactly what he's like. Like, you go kill himself. I, I'm like, waiting what for Aaron him to just say. said about the Democrats is right because they acting like Batman. He doesn't think correctly. I don't care what he is. He can be a doctor. He can be an astrophysicist. The nigga ain't got no sex. My Cutty Corner shout out is a positive one. It goes out to uh, Judge Caroline Wall. Uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, dismissed a motion to dismiss a case being brought against the city of Tulsa for the 1921 uh, race massacre. The dismissal of this motion to dismiss the case will allow the case to move forward to hopefully get reparations for the descendants of any of those people from the Greenwood uh, neighborhood that was destroyed May 31st through June 1st, 1921 and is hoping to create a special fund for survivors and descendants of the massacre that left over 300 people dead in the once booming neighborhood of Greenwood. There are three actual living survivors from the massacre and from that day that were there. They were also in the courtroom this week and they're pushing hopefully to get this case through so that they can see some form of justice. The three plaintiffs that are part of the case uh, that were there are Hughes Van Ellis, it's 101 years old, and Viola Fletcher and Leslie Benningfield Randall are both 107 years old. And, uh, you know what I'm saying, it would be at least some wonderful, you know what I'm saying, karma to the world, serendipity to the world, if, if something can be established to acknowledge and set the record straight on this day, which is part of what the plaintiffs are looking for, the true narrative of what, what transpired, get the support that should have been put out there after this terrible thing happened and it's kind of been kicked, kicked down the road or brushed under the rug and ignored in our uh, in our history. And maybe that's CTR. I'm sick and tired of them want to teach CTR in, in school. I don't know if, I still don't know if, if our friend Herschel Walker know what that mean. Critical race theory, can you tell me what that mean? Um, or if he was ever taught about it in school. What does that but, mean? What does what that is mean, that? Jared? But, but this is this is this is at the root of of what CTR is about, right? That critical race theory, CTR, as as my friend said, and I'll tell you what it means. It's it's getting to the root of these events that happened that stifled the growth or stifled the progress of entire generations and fa families, generations of families, families and their generations, uh, neighborhoods, towns being systemically or systematically. You know what I'm saying? Marginalized. And when I say marginalized, I mean stifled, stunted in growth. The same way you can see things, organisms grow and develop, uh, whether it's a plant or a bacteria, in nutrient-rich environments. They, they can thrive in nutrient-depleted environments. They will be stifled. They will only grow to what the resources allow them to. And in America, this is a place of abundance. This is a place for people to be able to grow. This is a place for opportunity, right? We're Americans. We're not black. We're not white. We're American. We're all mutts. I hate to tell you that. So in that way, you know what I'm saying, that is why we need CTR in school um, so that people can learn like, hey, it's not about the fact that it's happened. It's about how it's happened and impacted so we can learn from it and grow. And the people who live with privilege, benefit from violence, racism, and privilege can better understand how they can deconstruct it and not take part in these privileges through perpetuity. But unfortunately, a lot of people want to remain ignorant to it because it allows them to live with a cleaner conscience and brunch without any, you know what I'm saying, self-doubt or self-image issues. We should have learned a long time ago that 23 and me screwed us all up.
hey, Kareem, tell us about uh, uh, any new, you know what I'm saying, projects you're on and, and where people can find, you know what I'm saying, your, your, your podcast and your content um, and any other shows that are coming up in the future that you're excited for. Well, actually, I got a show tonight. That's where I'm headed to right now at the at the Comedy Chateau. Again, these last this last week and a half, man, it's been it's it, LA's been on fire for stand up. You know what yeah. I mean? So, I'm just trying to ride that wave. But just follow me on social media, man. Uh, Kareem Matthews on all platforms: Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Pornhub. You know what I'm saying? You can, keep up. You, you can keep up with everything I'm doing right there. You know what I mean? Hey, I, hey. I definitely got to come back again when I can chop it up longer with y'all too. Hey, you know? hey, 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 Kareem, you got some BBWs on your Pornhub channel? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm the, yeah, last one. I'm, I'm the last one to discriminate. They can all get it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, that BBW action gets a lot of views, man. You'd be surprised. I'm the and I'm the one. I'm the one that's keeping the, that's keeping the lights on over there. <laughs> <laughs> you both, brother. No, yeah, no, I'm think... not surprised. I'm proud <laughs> in that category myself. Hey, you, hey, hey, y'all think I'm playing? I like honey. Oh, boy. I know you're not playing. <laughs> you think hey. I'm playing? <laughs> if, she, if she ain't five three, two twenty five. I don't want her. Hey. Man, that's what happens when you get older, yo. You need someone that can take that punishment. <laughs> You said, hey, anything under 199, that's too skinny for me. Yeah, exactly. you're not big enough to get on this ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we all sound like the crew we all go at the barbecue right now. <laughs> that's why I don't go to no family events, only people I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, silly. Uh for sure. Well, yeah, yeah. So be sure to check out Kareem.matthews on uh Pornhub, Instagram. S thing. S <laughs> bang. 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 Only I'm fans. Are you on OnlyFans on also? Grindr. He's not on Grinder yet. Not be found on Grinder. <laughs> don't don't know. <laughs> don't grind it. He might be on he, OnlyFans. He, he walked us down that part in such a great way, though. It started with LinkedIn, then it ended up with Pornhub. I said, yeah, we got we got there quick. <laughs> and two clicks <laughs> <laughs> well just make sure that when you do find them on uh on whatever social media platform you find them on ask them this where you been since yesterday knuckle oh, no. you been fucking around nope let me smell your dick <laughs> <laughs> love that sound but i hate that damn movie you love that sound, <laughs> every week i gotta be reminded how much i don't like that movie Iris. Yeah, Kareem, next time you're on, we have to talk to you about our New York trip, man. Me and Aaron were in New York. We uh that's when we caught uh your boy uh Chris Rock. Yeah, Chris yeah, Rock yeah. in uh in at the comedy cellar about a week after he had gotten slapped. Sla yeah, no, nah, I definitely gotta hear that story. Oh yeah, it was good. And then the highlight, the highlight though, is more than Chris Rock was the celebrity that came in it's hanging out with a beautiful, us. buxom white woman. She was the opposite of beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> But she she had some thickness on her. She looked like she could have been about two. Uh, <laughs> but I don't, uh, think, I don't think we ready to have that conversation about the thicker you are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the, the more yes. we will put up with, yeah. Our our, our, our friend uh, Cuba Gooden Jr. popped in and was sitting behind us. So that was that was just. Oh, uh, is that right? Aaron, that Aaron was getting all the goods. On. I was a little bit further away, so I couldn't quite. Yeah, hear I had him. a right. He but, was right next to me. That man was fucking <laughs> barely holding Cuba's on. Was a wild boy, yo. Uh, Definitely an edible. He definitely doing coke as coffee. Yeah, cool. Coop is a wild boy. He enjoys himself. But you know, you get a point where coke is no longer fun. It's to only keep you awake. Yeah, right. Yeah, that point. That's called life. the addiction stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he he way past that point in life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was talking with that. He was talking with that that numb throat. You know, what I'm saying that nasal drip was it was it. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Man, you couldn't understand. She was saying when you need to get past you to the bathroom. Yeah, he did. He's that's not even that's that Coke English. <laughs> he's he's speaking that pure Colombian English. No, nah, pure Colombian <laughs> English. That's, when your when your nose, you ain't got when you you only got one nostril now instead of two. You ain't got no lining. Ain't got yeah. no lining in that nose. Yeah, I've been. I, yeah, I've seen some people who do too much coke, and then they think they they think they like. It was like exactly what Richard Pryor was saying. It's like and dudes be trying to talk a lot of shit on cocaine too, right? Be thinking they making plenty of sense. Don't be saying shit. 
Yeah. I mean, uh, shit, I nick some shit. Man, my shit, goddamn. Exactly. It's like that. <laughs> I've seen it firsthand, and Cuba seemed like he was oh, yeah. at around that stage in the bathroom. Like, oh, hey, man, man, it was a lot of my. <laughs> A lot of my pops' friends used to be like that. I didn't understand what they, I thought they was talking jive. <laughs> Off that cocaine. That's that's what jive is. <laughs>